Hey, good morning, everybody. It's KB5MIQ, big boy. Thought we'd uh, make a little short video this morning, talk about something I've hit on in several videos. I'm going to try to go straight to the point on a few things this morning. I keep seeing new techs asking about different types of 10-meter mobile radios. And there's some good ones out there. Uh, I don't know how some, you know, there's anything you can get recommended on. A lot of hams are calling them glorified CBs, and a lot of them are. And a lot of hams are giving you point blank, don't buy nothing unless it's one of the big three. Well, here's what I've always said on this. This is why I do this channel, because I'm trying to keep this centered at new hams and hams on a budget. Now, I'll be the first to admit, if you can afford... One of the big three HF radios, I'm talking ICOM, Kenwood, Yesu, I even throw a Linko in there. That's great. If you buy a good used radio, that's great. You can get one. Uh, a lot of guys can't do that starting out. Honestly, when I got into this hobby, uh, I sold a gun to buy my first used HF radio. Luckily, I had a guy helping me out that knew the radio and checked it out for me and I got a good deal on it. But I sold a gun to buy my first radio. So that's just how I got into the hobby because I've always I've always done this hobby on a budget. Now don't let the fact that you may or may not be able to afford a full up all band radio as a technician class to get on 10 meters. Let me remind you what your privileges are as a technician. I just looked this up again to be sure. This is off the ARRL, and this is the uh, technician class rule changes. Okay, technicians now have access to the general class CW privileges on 80, 40, and 15 meters. Plus, you have CW and radio teletype privileges on the 10 meter band from 28 to 28.3, 28.0 to 28.3. And you have single sideband phone privileges from 28.3 to 28.5 megahertz. Now, remember, the 10 meter band's a big band, it goes from 28.0 to 29.999. So, but 28. Dot 300 to 28.5 is your phone privileges in the 10 meter band. Have a lot of fun there, I promise you. It's a good part of the band to be into, especially when the band gets opened up. I, I highly recommend it. I've uh, had a lot of good of good contacts there and, uh, and when I first got into this hobby back in the 90s. So now, do uh what do you buy? All right. Of course. If you can buy a full up HF rig, that's fine. And if you do CW and you want to work CW on them other bands, having a full ball band HF rig would be the way to go. But a lot of guys on a budget, like I was and still am. So do you buy a single band 10 meter mobile? That's what you can afford. My one. Uh, but listen to this. So you're going to have to buy one that's pretty reputable. And what I'm saying about reputable, it's going to have a VFO on it. And it's going to have sideband on it. You really need to look at these 10 meter, these radios are advertised as 10 meter, 12 meter radios. That a lot of them only have AM and FM. And which I'm going to guess, I'm not an expert, some of the experts can correct me, that those radios are probably fairly easily to be modified into 11 meter CB band. Okay, because you don't have FM privileges as a tech. The FM portion of 10 meters is way up at the end of the 29 megahertz, up to 29.9 range. I can look it up and give you the exact frequencies, but I don't want to know it off the top of my head. I've made a few contacts up there, but... Not very often I, I go up there and fool with repeaters. There's some 10 meter repeaters in this country. But you don't have privileges for that. You got to work phone from 28.3, 28.5. So if you're getting back to the mobile 10 meter single band radio, there's nothing wrong with a Ranger 2950. I had one. 
works great. Now they, bear in mind, they're not going to have the same filters that a high dollar radio has in them. And they, most of them are going to be 25 to 30 watt PEP radios. And that's, and that's what you're going to get. You can run them with a smaller power supply. Uh, when the 10 meter band's open, a cheap homemade dipole up about 30 feet, and you can talk all around the world one of them. Just have to, you know, <laughs> excuse me, take your time making the contacts with them. But, Look at it. Now, there's a lot of brands of radios out there that say 10 meter on them. And I looked at one at the sidewalk sale yesterday that was one of the glorified CBs. All it had on was AM, FM, and a channel selector. That ain't going to work on 10 meters. Now, I don't care what they say. It's probably not going to be what you need. I did notice one of these elves here, I think it's one of the President series that says 10 meters. Shows a VFO and a channel selector, and I'm not real sure on exactly how that's supposed to work, but it's supposed to have had single sideband on it. So if it's a legit 10 meter radio with single sideband, that should work. Now, but if you want to stick with something that you know is supposed to be a true ham radio, MFJ sells a 9410X transceiver, single sideband, 10 meter, with a mic, and $305. 20 watt PEP radio, single band radio. All right. Those, I can't pronounce it, Zingal, uh, I think they're, I can't remember what my buddy told me they was called, or some kind of uh, computer based radio. I think they're 20 watt all band radios and they're in the three to four hundred dollar range. Use gear. There's nothing wrong with use gear. Now, I looked at some radios yesterday. I looked at an older Kenwood TS830S and for some reason that radio has always fascinated me. I looked at a super clean one yesterday that was pretty reasonably priced. Didn't really have a lot of extra money on me yesterday when I looked at it. The guy said there was a little problem with it. He would have took a little less. I'm not good at fixing stuff like that. I'd have to have somebody help me fix it. I, I'm too fumble fingered to get down into the guts of a, you know, any kind of radio to do board solder. And I can solder, but I'm not, I don't feel comfortable with my board level soldering. So I didn't, I didn't pick it out yet. I might, if it's the next sidewalk sale, I might look at the guy again, I might look at it again. Um, if you're going to buy used gear, now, it helps if you're not real savvy on looking at gear, it helps have somebody with you that knows what they're looking at. Now, I've always used rule of thumb as my gut feeling when I look at something. Uh, look at how clean it is. Look how the case is scarred up. If it's shown any signs of abuse, rust. Or anything like that, then you might want to consider staying away from it. I looked at a Kenwood receiver that I almost made the guy an offer on, but I got to looking at it, the case was broke. I had a couple of breaks in the outside of the case that kind of made me think it might have been dropped. So I didn't make an offer on it. Uh, but, you know, get somebody to help you out. Ham clubs, a good ham club should be able to help you out. On getting set up on the first time. Um, used gear, I, like I said, I'm good at picking out guns. I've been buying guns all my life. But radios, I my last one was new. I was working a lot of overtime at the time. I was able to afford to buy a brand new one, and, I, and that's how I got my brand new 897 about, I guess, going on close to 12, 13, 14 years ago now. Got it in 07. If you can afford a full up rig, do it. Main thing is just try to get on 10 meters, especially now the band is starting to open up some. I was in on here this morning, it's kind of storming here now, so I've shut down for the day. But Central America and South America come in a, a lot and you can work them off a dipole. Now, don't, don't shy away from the 10 meter mobiles, but just look at them, look at the features on them, and remember what you're buying and what you're going to do with it as a ham radio operator. Because 
remember ham radios are not considered FCC type accepted because we have BFO we're able to maneuver around in different modes of the band but CB radios have to be channelized or FCC type accepted I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that a lot of guys buy those 10 meter mobiles and mod them to go in 11 meter bands so they can run them in their car or truck because they got a little more output power. I'm not going to lie to you and tell you people don't do that. I hadn't done it, but I'm not going to lie to you tell you you don't do that. But as a ham radio operator, we don't need to be involved in that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to say, there's nothing wrong with a good 10 meter single band mobile radio. A buddy of mine Work, we used a Radio Shack, I think I remember the number of it, 2510, I believe, for years on 10. Made all kinds of contacts on it. Uh, HKV's got an older unit and uh, can't remember the number on it. He made a lot of contacts on it. In fact, his microphone giving him trouble. He's trying to get it back on the air now. I had a Ranger. I've had two Ranger 2950s. And I made contacts with them. Uh, and mostly on a homemade dipole up about 30 feet. So just remember that. Ask for help. If you ask on social media, be ready for your answers. But ask for help. Don't shy away from one. I mean, if, if a 25-watt, 10-meter mobile will get you on 10 to show you what the rest of this hobby is about, do it. Do it. If you can afford a full-up HF rig, go that route too. One thing that, I, that a tech might consider is if, and I don't, I don't know how to word this where it sounds right, but getting your feet wet with a 10 meter mobile, say, or even at MFJ for 300 bucks, and versus paying eight or 900 or 1,000 for a full up HF rig. Say down the road, you don't renew your license and you don't want to stay in the hobby. Well, I'm not going to say you can't sell that rig, but you might not recoup all your investment as readily. So it's just a good idea to get started. Start with something simple. Start with a 10 meter mobile. When you upgrade to general, you still got your 10 meter mobile as a backup. I wish I had to had one of mine back just keeping here as a backup sometimes. And I hope I didn't come out right because I want to see people advance in this hobby. I really do. And buying a full up rig, and if you're good at CW, you've got all the CW privileges as a tech, you can go ahead and be practicing on, go right ahead and go that route. The main thing, try to get on the air, ask questions, and don't shy away from the single bands. All right, everybody, I appreciate everybody who subscribed. I hit 199 subscribers for a new channel. We're still working on subjects. Anybody got a subject they'd like to see us try to cover, uh, shoot me an email. KB5MIQ is my call sign. My email's posted on my QRZ page. I'm getting a few emails from people. I appreciate that. W5DLX, WD5HKV, and myself, we try to come up with ideas for these videos to help promote the hobby. We do our nightly round table on uh, 28450, Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Friday nights, starting about 7.30 Central Standard Time. If somebody's on that frequency, we're going to be in there close one side or the other, so if you hear us, check in with us. We, we urge people to do that. We enjoy that when it happens. And uh, Ham Radio Flea Market and Trading Post on Facebook, uh, Ham Radio uh, ham Radio for Newbies, several other Ham Radio pages on Facebook, good ones to check out. Hope everybody has a great week. Thanks for all who subscribed. This is KB5MIQ Big Boy, 73.